Episode 118 of Australia's number one marketing show. In this episode, I have a fireside chat with an award-winning guest house owner about precision marketing, over-delivering, the power of TripAdvisor, and creating packages for teddy bears. Welcome to the Small Business Big Marketing Show, where successful small business owners share their secrets to take your marketing to the next level. Now, here's your host, Tim Reid. Yes, indeedly doodly, that is right. Welcome back, listeners, to Australia's number one marketing show. I am your host, Timbo Reid, but far, far more importantly, you are a motivated small business owner ready to really crank it up with some very smart marketing. And we are brought to you by the very, very good folk at Net Registry who have got some fantastic exclusive listener packages for anyone tuning in to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. Those packages can be found at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. There's a startup package if you're just getting yourself sorted online. There's a website refresh package if you want to give yourself your website. I was going to say your a bit of a tickle, but your website a bit of a tickle, and there's a grow online package which is SEO based. You can find them by clicking on the net registry banner at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com or flick us an email to tim at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and I will introduce you to Sam Shetty, who is a master online marketer at Net Registry, who can uh, who, who more than willingly and open, openly, openingly, what's the word I'm looking for there? Don't know. But he'll help you. He'll sort you out. He'll sit you down, no obligation, and figure out how your online marketing can be improved. Now, we have got a fantastic show coming up. Great feedback from last week's interview with Sammy Kavanagh, the leading producer of oh, in Australia of some radio shows. He talked to us about how to turn listeners into raving fans, also known as customers into raving fans, and he shared a great way of generating new ideas in your business. So if you haven't listened to that, go and check it out because he bases a lot of his thinking uh, on someone he brought out from overseas who used to work with a very famous Irish band and knows a bit or two about creating raving fans. Hey, um, I've got to tell you, I have got to tell you, I have just finished putting together my beautiful daughter's desk ready for her to start year seven this year. It was an emotional time, not only the fact that I was putting together a desk for her to spend the next six years of her life basking in the glory of homework. However, putting that desk together, I've got to tell you, I think I'd rather set fire to myself. I um, Look, the instructions just weren't friendly. They were not friendly, and I am not the mechanic. I am not the guy with the tools, let me tell you. I'm the guy with the microphone. I can talk my way out of a situation, but I can't put a desk together. Anyway, it's done. I think it took about five hours. It was time well spent with my beautiful daughter. We had some music on, playing some tunes, pulling some dances, every now and then just screaming because I just couldn't figure it out. My question is, my question is, what do we make unnecessarily hard for our clients? Because I bought this desk at Officeworks and the instructions were Officeworks branded. So you would think, you know what, if you're going to put your name to something, make it simple and clear and friendly. But uh uh-uh, Oh my God, you know, it was pain. So what are we making unnecessarily hard for our clients? It's a really good question. It's a killer question. Thank you, Phil McKenney, from a past interview. Um, It's a killer question that we could be uh, asking each of ourselves as business owners. Um, Now, guys, a bit sad last week, bit sad. I got rejected by Seth Godin. Seth Godin, Seth Godin. So I sent in this email. Let me let me read you the email. Hey Seth, Timbo Reed here, founder and host of Australia's number one marketing show and link to the show. I just interviewed Valerie Koo of Power Stories and spoke at length about you. Would you be up for an interview via Skype? Whilst whilst it'd be an opportunity for you to promote the Icarus Deception, I'd love the focus of our chat to be quite simple. I'm thinking one of the following topics would be interesting, and I list three topics. Forgotten marketing concepts every small business should know and apply, or what infuriates you about marketing, or five marketing principles every small business owner must adhere to. Enough from me. 
I'll wait to hear from you with a yes and a time zone, then we can nail a time. Cheers, Tim Reid. Seth came back and said, and very politely said, no, I can't read you. Uh, there was some email correspondence that went back between Seth and I, um, which I can't read because in his email footer, Seth says that um, this this note is off the record um, unless we agree otherwise. So anything Seth sent back to me, I can't read. He politely declined. I share that with you because I'm a bit sad. I was really, you know, he's a bit of a, you know, put him right up there. You know, read all his books, um, often quote him in my keynotes. Uh, I've spoken to about him on the show more than once, um, and it was a news resolution to get him on the show. Say la vie. But one thing that really um, touched me, because I put it out on Twitter saying that I was a bit, um, what did I say here? I am um, a tad shattered, not on Twitter, on Facebook. I said, I'm a tad shattered, following some email back and forth with marketing doyen Seth Godden. He has declined to appear on my show. And I got 20, how many? 26 comments and a bunch of likes uh, coming back from people. A lot were really touching. And for everyone who, who did respond to that, I, I was a bit kind of, it did, it, it touched me. It, it really, uh, you care. A lot of you care. And I love that. I care too. Good old Lukey did say, you need a Seth, we can campaign, Timbo. Not a bad idea because I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. I'm not sure what my next step is, but I am going to try and I am going to spend parts of this year still trying to get him on. Um, Michael Field, a long time listener of the show, said, Tim, my worldview is that we are all best served by getting behind guys like you and saying, go for it. I've always admired your energy and enthusiasm, and there's one thing I know for sure about enthusiastic people. They don't let minor setbacks discourage them. One door closes, another 50 open. Beautiful. Thank you, Michael. And I got a lot of, um, there are a lot of comments like that on the Facebook post in regards to that. So, you know, yeah, it was, I was a bit shattered. Um, I kind of maybe even arrogantly thought he'd just say yes, even though I know he's like incredibly busy, would be asked for interviews all the time, but he does, um, he has been doing a lot of interviews on podcasts lately. So that's life. Another funny coincidence that happened at that time is one of uh, my listeners, Cheyenne Ainsworth. Hello, Cheyenne. Um, had this wacky post um, about a week prior saying the first six people to like this post, um, leave your address and I'll send you a surprise throughout the year. And I did it. You know, I love a freebie. Who doesn't love a freebie? Um, and I do, I, I liked Shane's post. And the next thing I get is Seth Godin's book in the post from Cheyenne, The Icarus Deception. Uh, I had to laugh because, um, you know, what timing, what timing, and uh, I'm in the process of reading it now. Um, yeah, still reading his books, still love the guy, love his, love his approach. Um, all right, getting close to the interview, guys. Um, we uh, It is a great interview today. It's a small business doing some very big marketing. Funny that, that's the name of the show. Um Guys, I'm opening up Deep Dive Mastermind Group 2. Deep Dive Mastermind Group 1 is going along swimmingly. It's going along beautifully. So much value that I'm getting and the members, most importantly, are getting from being a part of the mastermind with me. If you want to find out more about Deep Dive Mastermind number 2, um, I'm looking for 10 motivated small business owners to join me once a week via webinar where I answer your marketing questions and so does the rest of the mastermind. Um, it's a lot of fun. If you do want to grow your business, want to put a bullet up it, want to turbocharge it, go to deepdivemastermind.com. Okay, um, now, speaking of big names, and the last few guests on my show have been big names. We've had Mia Friedman from the from Mamma Mia, the empire that is Mamma Mia. Mia actually um, emailed me a couple of days ago saying how much she enjoyed the interview and wants to get a podcast going herself. So um, looking forward to talking to Mia about helping her get a podcast. And just in case you didn't know, I do have a business called getyourownshow.com.au where I help people like you get your own show. Other big names I've had recently, Tom Dixon from Will It Blend, and now it's time 
for one of the small guys to come on. And I've got Richard Everson from Shoneg, which is a country guest house in country New South Wales, or New country ACT, just outside of Canberra. Not New South Wales, outside of Canberra. And Richard is a long-time listener of my show and sent me an email, which part of got my attention and as a result suggested Damn right, Richard, you come on Small Business Big Marketing and shake your marketing feather. He said, my wife and I own Country Guest House Schoenig, which is spelled S-C-H-O-N-E-G-G. We love the business and after 10 years, seven tourism awards and over 65% repeat and referral business, we like to think we've learned a thing or two about marketing. How about you interview me? That was the kind of premise of the email. And that got my attention. I'm always looking for people to interview. I'm always looking for small businesses doing big marketing. And that's what Richard is doing. Great stuff. He shares some some marketing gold. It's dripping from the small business big marketing headquarters ceiling as per usual. Pen and paper at the ready, guys, because Richard's doing some clever stuff on a shoestring budget. And he's also um, an ex-chef of a Michelin hat restaurant in London. So knows a thing or two about customer service, let me tell you. Enough from me. Remember, this is an interview that is dripping with gold. So have the pen and paper at the ready. Grab a cuppa. See you on the other side. Richard Everson from Shoneg, welcome to Small Business Big Marketing. Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, now, Richard, you approached me a few weeks ago with the idea of coming on the show, which I really like. A, I like that. I like people who put their hands up to come on the show. And um, you said, and I'll quote you, my wife and I own a country guest house, Shoneg. We love the business and, and after 10 years – seven tourism awards and 65% repeat referral business. We think we know something or we know, we think we've learned something about marketing. Yeah. Quote, unquote. What do you, what do you know about marketing a small guest house in regional Australia, Richard? That was a pretty big, um, pretty big introduction, wasn't it? It was. Um, Well, look, thanks for following up. Yeah. Look, I, I think, as I said in the, in the introduction, we know about marketing a guest house. We've had an extraordinarily enjoyable time doing it. Um, we've had some success, and I guess we'd just like to sort of share a few mm. few tips that we've picked up along the way. That's great. Oh, good on you too, because you know, like the show is called Small Business Big Marketing. It's the absolute spirit of the show. Now you've got Shoneg is it's a six room guest house outside of Canberra. Um, so, what have you learned about? How would you define marketing? Let's start there. What's marketing to you? Um, well, I guess there's getting people through the door is at the crux of it, letting people know you're there, letting people know who you are. Mm-hmm. And I know you talk a lot about brand. We really want to create a distinct uh, impression in people's minds about what we offer. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've worked hard to, to develop that. So I guess marketing is basically letting people know you're there and letting people know what to expect and encouraging them to take the next step. Mm-hmm. Do you spend a lot of time on the – it's an interesting question. Do you spend a lot of time on marketing your business? I believe we're always marketing, so you could say 100%, but a- actively, how often do you market Shoneg? I think, again, fantastic question. I think at the start, and again, uh, that's one of the sort of the messages I, I suppose I'd like to share, is at the start you need to do even more than 100% potentially. Um, it's it's really hard to get traction. It's really hard to get your name out there. You need to work and work and work. Mm-hmm. Um, the good news is that as you build a presence in the market, as people get to know you, um, we like to think we sort of handed over a lot of that marketing uh, to our guests mm. um, and they do a fantastic job of it for us. Um, and so, and well, again- Well, let's just stop there. Cause, so clearly what you mean by that is that by providing a great product and a great service, you're encouraging word of mouth and people are actively saying, hey, you've got to go and stay at this place called Shoneg, yeah? That's 100% correct. So, so uh, because listeners would have heard me say before, um, word of mouth is not a marketing strategy, it's the result of great marketing. So do you, ha- do you actively encourage people to talk about your business? Yeah, we do. Um, I, I, the thing that actually prompted my me getting in contact with you was your comments about TripAdvisor. Mm-hmm. 
And I think I said at the time, I, you, you said it'd be great to get the uh, the owner of TripAdvisor yeah. on. I said, look, I'm not the owner of TripAdvisor, but I'm a very um, happy customer, if you like. Mm-hmm. Um, and we found TripAdvisor to be a fantastic uh, tool. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you ask if we encourage, yes, we do. We've we've got in our in little room compendiums, we've got a page in there that says, if you've enjoyed your stay, we'd love your comments on TripAdvisor. Mm-hmm. And we have our little awards in the in the foyer. And so as people are checking out, they've sort of got that TripAdvisor reinforcement there for them to, you know, to encourage them to take the next step. And then if they do make a comment, we make sure we, we get back and, and thank them for it. Um, and... Again, we've gone a step further with our website. We've got the links to TripAdvisor. We, you know, we actively encourage that, that sort of um, that feedback. So that's one way we do it. Um, it's really important, TripAdvisor. I stayed uh, our last two family holidays, Richard. One was at Club Med, and the other one was at a resort up in Noosa. And both of them actively asked us to say, or not to say, to go to TripAdvisor and leave a comment, like actively. I was quite surprised. Um, Particularly someone like Club Med, who well, Club Med are fantastic marketers. So in a way, I'm not surprised. But they were all, they were quite overt about it. In fact, a number of people during our stay kind of I remember t- hearing them talk about TripAdvisor. It's, a, it's an important channel for your industry, isn't it? It's it's great. Um, I think it's it's important because it's again it it's not any particular organisation marketing. It's it's the public. It's the guests. It's the people who've been there. Um, so it's an you know it's an unsolicited. Well, I guess we've asked for the mm. for the reply, but it's you know there's no commercial gain for these people to to share their thoughts, and it goes both ways. Um, there's not every comment on TripAdvisor is is um, you know is fantastic. There's plenty of uh, opinion in both directions. So you've you've got to be careful. Well, often those places are a good place to complain. Yes. Um, and, and again, I, I've, I've seen that happen. I've seen friends of mine who run excellent businesses um, who've had a bad day and they've copped um, a bit of flack in TripAdvisor and they have, to their credit, they've responded honestly and they've made their apologies and they've made good. Um, and I think at the end of the day, just, you know, as you've often speak about social media, um, you know, it's a great forum for communication. It's a great forum. You know, it's very transparent. Mm. Um, and, and even if you do get, you know, one of those negative reviews that thankfully we haven't, but should that occur, I think, you know, an honest response, an apology, an explanation goes a long way. So, mm. yeah, don't be scared of TripAdvisor just because it may, you know, it, it's good, bad and ugly. Richard, you said earlier that uh, you're in kind of maintenance mode in regards to your marketing, but early in the early days of Shoneg, which I think is about 10 years old? Yes. So in your early days, you needed to really shake the can and make some noise to say, hey, come and stay with us. How did you do that? Um, I think we went down a lot of different avenues. Um, and I think yeah, we, we did a lot of networking. And again, we still do that. Um, we're still very active in a whole range of um, community and tourism organisations, and we still put our hand up regularly to you know, to host events and to um, contribute and participate in events. So that still happens. Networking networking is incredibly valuable, and I think particularly. What do you mean, ne- what do you mean networking? Uh, tourism businesses can be a little bit isolated, and the alternative is to join into the the local and the regional tourism organisations. For example, Australian Capital Tourism are fantastic, um, and we don't have the big budgets that some of the corporates have, so we make contributions in other ways. We turn up, as I said, we, we host volunteers for their um, familiarisation visits. We make sure we do a nice morning tea. We occasionally maybe potentially a chocolate cake in mm-hmm. to visit those guys. Um, you know, chocolate cake always works. Cake a, a, I don't talk enough about that as a marketing strategy. Uh, it's a hugely uh, valuable uh, marketing strategy. <laughs> um, so, again, you know, the, the bed and breakfast associations and those mm-hmm. sort of things are all, all great ways of getting out there. And, again, we talked about our customers doing our marketing for us, but we also – we don't look at our colleagues as competitors. We certainly look at them as as friends and we do a lot of cross-referring. We do a lot of promotion of the region um, and that sort of thing because it's, you know, it's from a, a consumer's point of view, the, you know, the experience is more than just one destination. It's the whole, you know, it's the... It's the trip, it's the venue, it's the what you do during the day. Um, and people, when they come to us, they get that whole package. They go from one winery to the next. Mm. They hear each other, hear the businesses talking about each other. They refer on, you know, it's a, it's a I, really I, nice. I wonder whether we, uh, we as business, small business owners, avoid getting to know our competitors too much and whether we should be actively out there 
you know, doing joint ventures, you know, understanding each other's businesses, realising that the parts of, you know, the whole are, is bigger than the parts. Is that the right saying? That's absolutely correct. And I think that's one reason I was quite, you know, confident to put my hand up and say, let's talk about it, because our region in particular, potentially in the last eight years, has, you know, just flicked the switch from competition to cooperation. And we've done some amazing things. Um, and we've had some great success. We've cr- created some really big events. Give um, me an example of competition to cooperation. I like that. Well, we had a, a little association um, called the Makers of Murrum Bateman, just an informal gathering. The Makers uh, of Murrum Bateman. Makers of Murrum Bateman, all focused about, you know, um, artisans, hand-produced, hand uh-huh. yep. um, a lot of wineries, a lot of restaurants. Um, and we were talking about, you know, how are we going to do this? What are we going to do next? Let's create an event. And so the discussion was, oh, but, you know, what about the competition and, you know, the the discussion was had, look, you know, if we can get people out here and we can show them how much is out in this region, um, then instead of driving out to one winery, having a great time turning around and driving home, mm-hmm. people will go from one winery to the next then they'll stay for lunch and if they get really excited, they'll stay overnight and make a weekend of it and the best way to do that is to organise our event. So, yes. um, you know, these days we, we've, we the region, we, we've all visited each other's businesses, we've all gone uh, back of house, we've walked through the wineries, we've seen, you know, how the businesses operate and we're very happy and very comfortable to refer because we know that, as you said, collectively, we're far more of a, a destination if we can show people a, you know, a whole day's experience or a whole weekend's experience rather than just one individual business shining. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's been a really great lesson for us and something that we're kind of amazed when we do head a bit further out of our region and find people that are still... Um, you know, a bit ignorant of their of their colleagues, or a bit uh, suspicious. Um, you know, it, it's something that we really encourage the collaboration. Well, your your customer base, Richard, is it is it within? Are they, is it generally locals, or is it people travelling around the country? Because I'm interested to, you know, how do you know where to target your marketing? Sure, um, we find probably thirty percent are Canberra, thirty percent Sydney, and in terms of sort of psychographic, these guys are short break. They're uh, a typical profile is a young couple. Um, they're finally confident enough to leave their young children with their grandparents, um, and we're close enough that they can, you know, whiz away, have the phone nearby, and if there is an emergency, then get home. Of course, mm-hmm. there never is an emergency, but they're relaxed um, and they have a great time. So, you know, anniversaries, birthdays, um, that short break. It's you know, it's really incredible how valuable that is for people mm. um, and that's why people have such a great time. And then the other market is our food and wine travellers. Um, the Murray and Bateman region is potentially one of Australia's greatest cool climate wine regions and we've got some wineries that are, you know, setting the Australian standards. Um, and so um, a lot of people will make the trip down just specifically for that. So mm-hmm. we, we embrace that too. So, so getting to those people, so, okay, there's word of mouth that you generate as a result of providing great service, but are you, what else are you doing? You're advertising, you're direct marketing, you're on social media, you're on TripAdvisor, obviously, but how else do you get that message out? Uh, again, we, we do a lot, as I mentioned earlier, with our tourism organisations. Mm-hmm. If there's campaigns, we'll come on board. Um, you know, there's some great opportunities for small operators to participate in uh, collective marketing programs, um, and so... As I mentioned, we work with Australian Capital Tourism. When they have their um, promotions, we create packages that align with that and we can we use their um, online sales platforms. So, for example, their Australian National Gallery is just about to launch their Toulouse-Lautrec exhibition, mm-hmm. Blockbuster. Absolutely amazing what those those exhibitions do for tourism in the region. I can imagine. So, We've got our Toulouse Lautrec Ulala package uh, lined up. Okay, let's talk. Okay, if you've listened to me previously, I think you may. I love packages. I love the marketing strategy of packaging things up because it offers it just, for the consumer. We see value, you know, like we see it's a it, we, we see extreme value. So you've got your Ulala package. What's what have you packaged up in order to give it that name? Well, the great opportunity that we have working through our tourism organisation is that they can give us access to what we call untimed tickets to the exhibition. Mm -hmm. The blockbusters are so popular that you need to purchase a ticket that is scheduled and maybe a a 10.30 to 11.30 slot. You have to be in and out. And that's, you know, just because of the sheer volume of people. Now, Mm -hmm. 
the tourism operators have access to what we call untimed tickets. So you do have to arrive at a certain time, but you don't have to leave. So you can get in and know that you'll have your, you know, instead of the three-hour queue, mm -hmm. you can get in, you can enjoy all the, the, you know, the fantastic experience of that exhibition. Um, and then we say, get your dose of culture for the day, come back, lie down on your deck chair on a deck and watch the beautiful sunset. We'll serve you French-inspired canapes and a glass of premium wine um, on the deck. So um, it's just, you know, continuing that French theme. There's sort Love of French-inspired canapes. And um, so we get a little bit of exclusivity. We, we, you know, do, do you want to pass and do the can-can as -can, they're sitting on the deck? Uh, that's... If required, it, I have been known to do the can-can, Tim. That's scary. But anyway. <laughs> that is scary. Um, no photos will be shared. Okay. Okay, so, so packaging. I, I love packaging. Any, uh, any other packages you put together? I'm interested in this strategy. Oh, look, we've, we've, we've done some fairly ambitious packages. We, mm -hmm. we did a, a three-day $1,000 package where we uh, worked with our wonderful friends at a um, local day spa, and so that was a you know an hour and a half of pampering for a couple. Then down the road to uh, another local restaurant, which offered a beautiful um, main course and dessert package. And then we were offering a, a five course degustation the first evening. This was all tied into the Fireside Festival, which is a uh, Canberra region uh, promotion throughout August. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was you know kind of out there, kind of crazy. Um, Why? Because of the price. Very top end, yeah. Top end, okay. Um, how'd it go? It, it went well. I mean, we sold eight packages, so that's you know that's success. How many we, did you How many did you expect to sell? Look, we only had. There's only eight weekends. Huh. Uh, sorry, there's only sorry, there's only four weekends in August. Mm -hmm. uh, so to sell, you know, two per weekend was great. So you know, I, th I think it's a really interesting strategy to hit that. Uh, uh, Andrew Griffiths, who I do a show with every now and then, made the comment a few weeks ago. You know. Someone's got to be the most expensive. It may as well be you. And for exactly. that for that point in time, you chose to do that. There's there's a coffee shop in Melbourne, Richard, called Saint Ali, which recently went out in the media, or at least got media coverage. I'm not sure whether they active, actively sought it. I reckon they did. Twenty five dollar cups of coffee, right? Um, based on this four drip filtration system, you know, it takes ten yes, minutes yes. or blah blah. But you know. These things are not necessarily going to make you rich. I don't expect Saint Ali to be selling a whole lot of twenty-five dollar cups of coffee, but they're a wonderful positioning statement. I agree, and again, we were very happy to sell our eight packages, and those guys had an absolutely amazing time. The fact that we had that thousand dollar package on our website, as you suggest, people come and look at it and say, "Well, that's not for me this week," but I'm, you know, I'm one mm. of the guys that stays at that place that has those crazy packages, mm. um, and it, you know it does help build your profile. And again, we, the alternative to packaging is discounting and it's something that we really do avoid. So as you said, in terms yeah. of value, packaging um, is the way to go. There's a really interesting question, killer question. Phil McKenney, previous guest of mine, uh, invented this system called Killer Questions, which is a way of thinking innovatively about your business. And one of his killer questions is, what would you need to put together in terms of features in order to charge five times your normal price or ten times, change the number, whatever you want. But it's a really interesting question, isn't it, where you can – it forces you to put together high-end packages. Exactly. And, um, yeah, slightly alternatively to that, but we've, we've thought about something in a similar way. We've actually actually built a whole website around this prospect, but the idea was we did a, a teddy bears package. And so carers stay free – Teddy bears still pay the two hundred and fifty dollars accommodation for the weekend, but the carers <laughs> stay free. So the carer, the the teddy bears chaperone, <laughs> okay. stays free. Now you've lost the plot. So uh, that, that's cool. So okay, carer stays free. You pay for Teddy, and uh, and out of interest, how many Teddies kind of uh, forked out the two hundred and fifty bucks? Some region, uh, for some reason, our marketing hasn't quite reached the teddy bear. Oh, uh, what? Yet, but we're going to work hard on that. The, we're hoping you'll you'll. Create a breakthrough. Too. Well, I'm more than happy to uh, listeners. If there is anyone who's thinking of heading up to the Canberra area, please buy a teddy bear package uh, at shoneg.com.au. Is that right? Yes. Uh, it's actually got its own website. It's goldilockscottage.com.au. Oh, mate. Well, that is that deserves absolute promotion. Goldilockscottage.com.au. Um, te teddies are historically they're lazy, and and yeah. I, I imagine there's a whole lot of teddies out there. 
with Need some you. pampering. Well, they do. And they, they've got you on your shopping list, but you've just got to really continue to tap them on the shoulder. Um, enough of that. So, Richard, packaging. Okay, now, listen, you, you in particular, have worked at a one Michelin hat restaurant in London and and you have also worked on, is it the QE2? QE2, yes. Okay. So in what capacity did you work on both those uh, high-end, what would you call them? One's a vessel, one's a restaurant. That's correct. Um, chef or? Chef. chef, okay. Yeah. Now I'm guessing, I reckon there's some marketing insights then from probably a customer service perspective. Would I be right? That's true. That is true. Okay. Yeah. I, I, we, we, we position our businesses as sort of European, hospita- European hospitality with Australian friendliness. So, um, you know, that, that high end is precision. It's, you know, attention to detail. It's anticipating customer needs. It's delivering over and above. And okay. So- there's a lot of, hang on. Yeah, there's a lot there. Attention to detail, precision, um, anticipating customer needs. Gosh, shouldn't we all do that a bit more? How do you do that? Uh, well, again, we're very fortunate. We, we've we've got six rooms. We so every guest that comes along, we we have the luxury of as the booking in process, we can have a conversation. We get all the details, um, and if people let drop that it's an anniversary or it's a birthday or it's a whatever, we make some little notes. And so uh, as people arrive, I've got a wonderful, wonderful wife who's fantastic at all that sort of stuff. And so if it's a birthday cake, we'll have the name written in chocolate on the cake. If it's a, an anniversary, you know, there's, you know, we know that those guys need a little bit of space and a bit of privacy and, um, you know, we'll just do whatever we can to make sure that they have a good time. If they're out for the wineries, um, you know, we know who's open, we know who's closed, we know which way to point them if they're after Riesling. And um, so we can, you know, make sure that every person gets what they're after because everyone's after something a bit different. So. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, that anticipation, gee, that's a good one. And and how do you make customers? Well, already you've given a few insights in how you make them go wow. But are there any kind of um, other things? Have you got any little s- s- tactics that you pull out often that just make them go wow? Uh, look, I think again, if you look at the feedback, we, we've chose early on to offer a complimentary glass of local wine and canapes in our guest lounge at six pm every evening, mm-hmm. um, and again that puts a fairly sizable hit in the marketing budget, but it also makes a fairly big impression. Um, you know, there's there's chocolates on the pillows and that sort of thing, but that it's a very generous gesture that we do. It works really well. They're fresh, they're handmade, they're quality. The wine is premium local wine from our local uh, wineries so that people can already get that experience happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, that's a nice welcome. And again, it's a really nice sort of social occasion. If people would like to meet the other guests, there's a chance to mingle. If they want a bit of privacy, there's still that opportunity to enjoy that bit of hospitality and, and still, you know, not have to join in the conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the start. And then as people leave, they get a little jar of our jam, um, Little um, customised thanks for staying. Think of it tomorrow morning, Joe. Jam on the way out. And again, they're just little gestures that you know remain. Um, you know, once people get home, they can have that little jar of jam on the on the breakfast table and think back to happy times. I love it. Love it. Tell me about this concept uh, that you learnt on the QE two and in this Michelin uh, star restaurant of precision. Ah, oh, look again. I'll take some credit for the precision, but I mentioned my wife, and she's German, and she's, she's oh, say no more queen of precision. Um, but it it is. It's really just making sure that we deliver on on every aspect of it. So in terms of housekeeping, we make sure that every room's checked before guests arrive. Um, we make sure, as I mentioned, that any special needs are noted down and addressed. Um, you know, if people are uh, planning on going out, we make sure they're aware that, you know, on some nights of the week they do need to book, other nights it's a bit more relaxed. Um, you know, so we make sure that, you know, their their plans are in place and, and they're not going to get caught up by, um, you know, little details. So mm-hmm. um, that's the sort of thing we do. I mean, we get feedback and we act on it. We used to um, just offer our bathrobes as part of our indulgence package and then someone said they were so lovely and so we thought, look, what's the point of holding them back? So now everyone gets a lovely bathrobe and... Um, We've, you know, up, upped our amenities um, from just the basics to, you know, to, to be a bit more generous and just um, basically anticipate needs. There's fly spray in the, you know, aerosol, aerogard. If people want to sit out in the deck, they don't get sprayed a bit yeah, by right. mosquitoes and uh, those sort of things, just the, the little things. Yeah, lovely. What would you spend on marketing a year, Richard? Oh, uh, about 
I guess when we add in our wine bill, um, about eight, seven to eight percent. Uh, okay, of revenue, of, of, of turnover. Yes. Yeah. Okay. When you say add in your wine bill, you mean just uh, through- we we give away more wine than we than we sell <laughs> uh, with those canapes every night. Yeah, um, right. And our local wineries, I think we might be one of their best customers, um, and so that's that's a marketing expense, but it's a valuable marketing expense. Wouldn't the local winery be happy to kind of uh, tip some of your way? They they give us a really good price, and right. every now and again a, a case does turn up, and but again. You know, they've learned that it's certainly worth their while because we have the brochures out. We promote that wine as we're serving it. We want people to realise that it's a, a premium wine and, and it's amazing how many people jump in the car the next day, drive down to the winery and buy a case, you know. So, again, it's a, what you said at the start. Mm. If it's a good product, um, you just need to get it in front of them and, and it'll sell itself and that's certainly the case. Love it. Now, Richard Everson from Shoneg Country Guest House in, what is it, Murrum Bateman? Murrum Bateman, just north of Canberra. Our, our, our overseas listeners, are gonna, they, they love those kind of Aussie names, and that's a yes. classic. That is a classic. Now, um, as you know, at the end of these interviews, and you've already preempted this, who's the most famous person you've ever met? I did preempt this, and I. I in an I've email to me, you did. Dropped a few names. I've, I've, we've prepared meals for uh, Prime Ministers, and we. we delivered catering down to Air Force One and Marine One while they were uh, staying at Fairbairn. Um, but face-to-face, on a first-name basis, would probably be the Commissioner of the Australian Federal Police, Mick Kilty, who um, I served a great number of meals to and um, built up a great rapport, and he's a, a wonderful person. He's um, retired now. Good, to have on, good, good, good one to have on your side. Very good, very good guy to know. When you say you've cooked meals for Prime Ministers, did you meet any? Uh, not well, handed a canopy to and, and uh, that sort of thing, but not in uh, in depth conversation. But Love it. Yeah, certainly know what they like for breakfast. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, I'll, well, I well, won't go there. That's private. That's private. Uh, nothing too bizarre. I promise you. Hey, Richard, thanks so much for being on the show, mate. If if, um, if listeners do want to go and uh, check out Shoneg beyond the teddy bear package, now Shoneg, tough one to spell, easy one to stay at. It's S C H O N E double G. Is it .com.au? .com.au. And that means, by the way, pretty corner in Swiss German. Huh. Schoenig, pretty nice. corner. So a bit of a mouthful, but worth remembering. Always nice to have a, a story behind the name too. Just ask Valerie Koo, a past guest of mine, all about having, you know, all those different power stories. Hey, Richard, thanks for making contact. Thanks for listening and thanks for sharing. It's been a pleasure. Thank you very much, Tim. Cheers. <laughs> There it is, folks. Hope you enjoyed that interview as much as I did bringing it to you. And thank you, Richard Everson of Shoneg, for um, for sharing some some marketing gold. It is all about small businesses doing big marketing. I should never forget that because uh, I did name the show. Hey, um, next week, Cam Barber, The Vivid Method. If you are scared of public speaking yet acknowledge the fact that, you know what, you probably should find a stage or two to get up and sell yourself and your business from, because I, as personal experience would tell me, it is a very good way of marketing your business and yourself, speaking from stage, public speaking, scary, I know. Well, Cam Barber from The Vivid Method is joining us at Small Business Big Marketing Headquarters to explain to us, to reveal to us exactly how we can overcome our public speaking fears via a method, a step-by-step, tick-the-box method that will help us do it a whole lot better. That is exciting stuff. Lots of good guests to come, by the way, as well, post-cam. So stay tuned. If there is anyone you think, hey, Timbo should interview him or her because they are a great marketer or a very successful business owner doing great marketing, Send me an email, tim at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and introduce us. Enough of that. Guys and girls, have a fantastic week in your business. Remember, marketing is just a wonderful way of building your business. You should do more of it. Stop doing something that's not working and introduce something new to your marketing strategy and it will be happy days forever after. Until next time. Cheers. You've been listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show with Tim Reed. Want more marketing goodness? Then visit smallbusinessbigmarketing.com.